Hey, hi everybody. This is Shehbaz Muhammad uh, from Snorkel. I am Applied Machine Learning Engineer at Snorkel from Field Engineering Team. Uh, I'm one of the few international hires. And today, what we are going to cover, not so much technically in depth, uh, but how are enterprises developing LLM. So I have few facts, a uh, few of the routes, and a playbook that organizations are using. So world well, got uh, crazy uh, one and a half years before when ChatGPT released and literally everything changed. So uh, my talk is whole purpose on that. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna go through um, how do you do LLM deployment uh, and development in pers uh, pursuit of data-centric AI, that's the main theme. So I am also a Kaggle Grandmaster, discussion Grandmaster, I have won few medals, um, and I work with various organizations ranging from Analytics with the uh, H2O.ai, SogChain, deployed few models in production for EMEA region, constrained with GDPR. So I know how it feels to be like a developer, how it feels like a business person, and how it feels like actually being in the shoes in the real market. Uh, for the past two years before I joined Snorkel, I used to work for Data Robot as Applied AI Expert, and currently I work for Snorkel here expanding um, and uh, our EMEA and emerging market regions. So please meet Snorkel AI. So we started from a Stanford lab project nearly a decade ago. Currently we are AI 50 top AI firms to watch on Forbes list. It also Gartner cool vendor in 2002. Basically we are making whales uh, and I'm going to cover what we, uh, what's the basic technology that is powering all the organization to be able to develop. And less than half of the pro AI projects ever make it to production. And as Hakim told rightly, even after they make it to production, 91% within six months fail. And one of the core reason for that happening is uh, they do not have data or they do not validate business use cases and they are not driven by the business value itself. And what we advocate is that, hey, you have to start with a business process, find out a value, and you have to empower all that with data not focus on algorithms, processes, hyperparameters, because we fundamentally believe that all of that is commoditized. And the only thing that is unique to your organization currently is data. So today you have ChatGPT, you have OpenAI, but 10 years from now, there are going to be thousands of ChatGPTs. And the only way that you can be competitive in the industry is by having your data as your key differentiator. So I think this is worth of saying like, uh, was while in the market, like data is new oil, but the acts of it and the realization of it that you can see is from the world of LLMs, like how is the data uh, your new oil? And we fundamentally believe that the future of AI is specialized as, uh, so just like there can't be one human that can control all the government entities, just like assembly, uh, there can't be one AI, just like a big chat GPT that can control everything because it might hallucinate, it might be not perfect. So it can't really multitask unless you're powering it with entire earth resources. And even if you do so, there can be doomsday situation. So what we fundamentally believe is like these LLMs in simple plain English are compressed versions of the internet. So remember you have a zip file or you installed OS from a disk, LLMs are very similar it's just that they're compressed in TBs currently and they have reflections of whole world of internet between them. And what we would want to be able to do to able to get value out of it is craft, uh, you know, smaller language models out of them. Like in this case, compliance LM, transaction monitoring FM. And once we have this big base models, the traditional old supervised learning wins the game. So you can have all of those small models getting powered and assisting the big large language model where your big large language model can do uh, cognitive reasoning and your small models, you can always be able to trust, audit, uh, and bring a lot of values. And of the shelves, AI trained on public internet is not differentiating. Obviously, like if your competitor has it and you are offering, there is no core differentiation. And all the mainstream adapters are here. So in 2023, what we have personally observed is like there were a lot of cool demos. Like you chat with PDF, you can do X, Y, Z stuff, crazy with LLMs. Yes, you can create website, but I think that is coming to like slope of alignment. And here are we're early winners currently today. So there are also big organizations that are having huge success with generative AI. 
But basically, to be able to be successful, you have to know the magic uh, of the trick. And that is like data as like your key differentiator. So there are also like sweet plays, uh, I would say, in the graph where out of the AI box works really well. And that is where you see that, hey, LLMs can do this uh, and there is a threat to a job. So all the basic and general information. So as a rule of thumb, I take, uh, I assume in that way though. So if somebody says chat GPT or world of LLMs is going to be eliminate a job, I see that, hey, how how is that job orchestrated? Does it requires reasoning? Is it repeated you? Or to be able to do that job, do I have enough information on the world of internet? Something that I can read from Wikipedia and write article, that will be automated because LLMs can do that. But something like you go to a finance institution, you study loads of financial subject matter expertise that is not all on the internet, or at least in an organized format, chat GPT won't be good at that. So it is only good at the data that it is fed. So the AI data development is required when you have more data complexity, and you also have more accuracy requirements. Now that's the not case when you're creative, like you see the words of Sora and writing a poem. So you have to be creative there. Nobody's judging you are like 98% accuracy. So LLMs are good at exactly five to 10 years from now, we thought reverse is possible. Like AI can't get creative enough, but they can perform some mathematical calculations from Excel sheet. But reverse is exactly true. Like they are more creative enough, but they're failing to perform on the complex task. And as usual, like 80% of your data science and AI development uh, requires and focus you to be on data development. So if you are developing your data, you have power to be able to, ab ability to be able to drive that value in your business. And traditional development involves like, let's say I want to get started a use case. I would have raw data in silos. Now I bring all of them to be able to develop Labeling is a key aspect, and I think that's the bread and butter of Snorkel. So right now, for you to be able to take that data and start labeling, it's manual one-to-one -one process. You have 10,000 documents, you have to hire a lot of people. And if it is a finance uh, expert use case, you have to get financial analysts. They're also costly, and uh, you can't get thousands of them in a day. So you can also see that it is also a lot of work and they can also have a lot of mistakes. Let's say that you have created somebody, uh, give a very uh, good constraints and deployed that. If they have made mistakes in your data, how are you going to track that? So there is no auditability. And what if your use case has just changed and the requirements have just changed? All of your work is just gone because now you have not audited that process. And that's with exactly what we saw. So we, what we want to be able to do is, we want to convert all the AI data development process from manual, unauditable to a programmatic development, just like we do for software engineering. So right now in the world of software engineering, whenever somebody is modifying a code, nobody sits there and clicks push PR button, review button, CI CD button, all of that happens automatic. So we would want to be in a world where whenever I have a new data or a new category coming up, even the data labeling part is getting automated so that my new LLM or new machine learning model is up to date uh, with the latest information we have. And this is just a simple, uh, not a, a representation of how the platform works or uh, what's the component. So in a plain English, uh, explaining how it works. So in manual labeling, persons have to three individual documents and tag. With Snorkel, what you can do is you can create a functional directional signal. In this case, this is in plain English, but you can also use complex things at embeddings. And you can see that with simple rule based, now you are able to tag multiple documents and with targeted iteration, and you can also adopt it real quickly. So it's a business case chain. You want to merge some labels, you want to split some labels, all of that can be done programmatically. And because this is faster, and you also have SME in loop to be able to do that, what we're able to do is that going from zero ground truth to be able to having 90% performant models in production, it's a matter of weeks, uh, not in months. So previously in banks and large organization, you would have to spend six months, seven months. Like once you get access to data, then it is again one more six months. So total 12 to one year 
month of process to be able to get uh, a use case deployed. And once you deploy the model, uh, NannyML comes and uh, sits right there and says that, hey, this data was trained like one year back. Now this you have to redo all of this stuff. And that's the core problem of like data uh, being more important in programmatic data development. And here, the bigger picture, what we are being able to do in the world of large language models is like, we want to use the existing NLMs that are out there that have compressed versions of internet data and use that to also label your existing data. So now, now they're not good on your financial data or your niche or organizational data, but that's what Snorkel helps you. So you take your SOPs, ontologies, we take your documentation and do that rapid iteration. And the Snorkel IB comes where once you have given all of this directionally correct signal, Snorkel handles all of the signal and automatically generates one data point uh, and one label for your data point so that all of your directional signal is captured and you have a well-labeled training data. And we can use the similar techniques to also develop LLMs of the day because our first principles are revolving around data and data is also an essential for LLMs to perform well. And this is where today we sit on enterprise AI stack. So there are a world of infrastructure, cloud providers, there are also models that are commoditized. There are also infrastructure, vector DB, and this is where Snorkel would fit in. So you would need to provide data and you need to provide uh, your schema, like, hey, I want to work on a PDF extraction use case. I want to uh, classify my call transcripts, 10,000 stuff uh, call transcripts that I can't have labeling efforts uh, and put a lot of money in terms of hiring and labeling. That's where Snorkel comes in. Uh, we help organizations set up this. We have this SME collaboration where you can rapidly iterate, analyze, correct, export high training quality data, and then the possibilities are limitless. So what I see is organizations, are, organizations that do not want to risk it are going for low hanging fruits, like they take this high quality training data they deploy logistic regression model, which we are good. But because they're now training is, uh, you know, streamlined six months from now, now they're able to fine tune LLMs and they're able to do it in very rapid iteration because they can make quick adjustments to their data and the output of our platform can be an exported data as well as the model. And really we are also reflecting upon the industry and uh, it is uh, really rewarding for us. So Snorkel recently, uh, is at second and fourth position on Alpaca LLM Eval leaderboard. And we also got a big shout out from Microsoft that all the approaches that Snorkel takes in terms of focusing on data here uh, in the screenshot, it beats GPT-4 and a variant of GPT-4 and also Mistral Medium. So we use Mistral mod original model to be able to fine tune and all of our methods uh, are highly performant and with open source model, performing as equal as GPT-4. And apparently here, the winner model, GPT-4 Turbo, is also used for evaluation of the leaderboard. So uh, with some inch of performance, we'd also be able to get there. This is like uh, news from two, three weeks before. And the main product differentiator are like, hey, we are enterprise grade platform. We sit uh, and we meet your scalability, security. We also install on-prem. We do programmatic data development. We help you in error analysis, not just like doing labeling, but being able to say that, hey, you need to focus on your model. You need to focus on your ground truth. There are also use cases for the companies where we have uh, helped them understand that, hey, out of your original GTs, which were 1,000, like estimating a number here, uh, 700 of them were wrong, and they were able to figure that out because of Snorkel because either your subject matter expert signal can be correct or ground truth can be correct. So there will be a point in Snorkel error analysis tool that you'll be asked like, hey, the direction signals that you're writing, the SOP instructions, are they correct or ground truth is correct? And SMEs will have like very qualitative feedback on that 20, 30, 40 documents to be able to do targeted approach. Uh, and uh, we offer both uh, the product as like self-service and also we do custom, uh, meaning that uh, you will get a resident machine learning uh, engineer, like applied machine learning engineer, and we help you go from start, evaluate use case, deploy LLMs, and develop LLM for you. We also have 
native product that is AI de de uh, development platform that I just showed like with programmatic labeling, how you can label uh, faster and read that uh, to use cases. These are some of the common themes in different horizontal uh, and industry verticals from financial services, insurance, health, pharma, retail, commerce, government, uh, we deal and we deal with all of the machine learning tasks like classification, extraction. Uh, and where we really specialize is super complex um, and uh, highly niche data because regular LLMs can solve traditional sentiment problems, classification problems, but when it comes to harder problems like 200 page PDF, I would want to understand multiple tables information, that's where Snorkel would come in. I would skip to this slide, but basically this provides uh, a value both on the faster delivery, how we are able to say save six person years going from months to days, uh, and also reflecting on the cost uh, in millions for different banks, chatbots, PI extraction, um, and just want to flash this up real quick so that we are uh, level setting uh, on, hey, how is the generative AI landscape? So we had an LLM summit a uh, few weeks before where many organizations uh, joined, like uh, top 500 Fortune organization joined and their uh, technical teams. And we asked this survey, this is also available on the web. Uh, so basically how many applications are backed by one of one or more customized or proprietary LLMs uh, you currently have in production? Basically anything in LLM you have in production, just say yes. And there are about 38% organizations out of 342 that participated that didn't have anything with LLM in production. So meaning that 38% of the projects would fail in the POV stage, they didn't meet to production. And there are only one or two uh, uh, of like 36% uh, that had like in production and like 12, uh, there are like five plus organization that were like highly successful LLMs because they have AI maturity to be able to have that data ready in their organization to be able to kickstart and be the early adopters. By end of 24, what um, these organizations said is like, hey, by end of 2024, how many of you have targeted plan to have something LLM in production? And you see there is an uprise, like they, there are like a lot of organizations who are willing to at least have that low hanging fruit of a use case or something with respect to LLM in their production. Uh, this is also directly pressure from investors and every uh, other competitors who are having LLM chatbots and GPT powered stuff. So uh, we see the market is going to boom by end of 2024. And these are also a like list of basic ML tasks that are popular. So you can see that text generation and computer vision uh, being on uh, hi highest uh, and like classification and information extraction, I think is highest. Like this is average rank per se. Uh, I just want to cover this real quick in terms of like complexity of the use case and then I think I'll be done with presentation, open it for any questions. Uh, but basically what if you have 100 or 200 page of PDF documentation that is so complex? I know Gemini can ingest it, but there are also reports that it is going to hallucinate a bit. So we solved this for a top 10 US bank uh, where basically they, if they use GPT-4 and rag out of the box, they were only 25% accurate. Uh, but fast forward to January 2024 with Snorkel, uh, we were able to up their accuracy of like baseline 25% all the way till 89 plus in the phase two that is also currently going on. And how did we do it? It is all the programmatic data alignment that I'm talking about. So if I would rank in terms of the up uh, uptake in terms of accuracy where you would get today, much of it lies on underlying index data and the RAG pipeline that you would give to model or if you're using open source LLM, it is directly related to the data that open source LLM is trained on. So the first thing that we do is we use Snorkel to be able to get all the dates mentioned, all the legal clauses, all the section headers and extract key entities. Uh, it is not as simple as extracting January 1st, 2024, uh, but something like uh, when does this deal expire and it would say that this deal would expire from the last day of quarter plus 15 business days uh, from the deal commission date. Now, for you to be able to answer this question, you have to know what is business day definition in this contract, what's the last day of quarter considered, uh, what's plus 15 days, and you have to calculate all of that to give an answer. 
And this is really complex and that's why financial analysts sit and spend like hours in a day to, to be able to read contracts and reports. But now with Snorkel, given that we are able to programmatically tag very fast, we can also use the same tech to develop rack pipelines. Then uh, we focus on embedding uh, model fine tuning um, and optimize prompt flow. And that's how uh, we were able to improve how we are more relevant and um, basically doing programmatic tagging uh, in a much faster way that would, was not possible before and creating a, a very high value generative AI solutions use case. Uh, as an optional, uh, the optimization workflow today, uh, this is also recommended from OpenAI Summit, is start with prompt engineering, then if you want more context optimization, you can go to RAG, uh, but if you want more like how the model needs to act, you have to do it on fine tuning. And if you want everything, you have to do all of that above. And there is one thing that ties everything to this, and that is data. And that's what uh, Snorkel AI is for. Uh, I think that's up. Um, that's all with the presentation. I'm opening to any questions you might have.